Hello, my name is Manal. And my name is Zainab. And today we're going to talk about George Eliot's Silas Marner, the weaver of Reblow. George Eliot was actually a woman, a woman named Mary Ann Evans, who used the male pen name of George Eliot so her work would be taken seriously. She lived from 1819 to 1880 and is regarded as one of the most prominent writers of the Victorian era. Before we move on to discussing Silas Marner, let's uh, look at some of the most, uh, some of the themes that are frequently mentioned, uh, mentioned in Eliot's works. First up is realism. Eliot is known for her realistic portrayal of everyday life, emphasizing the importance of mundane details and ordinary experiences. She especially captures the reality of rural and small town communities, showcasing the beauty and struggles of everyday existence. Another one is morality. Characters often face complex ethical dilemmas and find themselves in the th a a tumble of right and wrong, virtue and vice, actions and consequences. She also explored the complexity of human nature and is known to develop characters with great arcs and mature development. Eliot has also been known to use her pen for social commentary, critiquing the issues that exist in the real world and often adding a political streak to her work. She has also lent her pen to showcase the lives of show social outsiders, misfits, unique people who don't fit with the norms of society. With that being said, let's move on to what actually happened in Silas Marner. Silas Marner lives in Lantern Yard as a respected member of the religious sect. He has shown great promise, but unfortunately he is falsely accused of theft by his best friend William, an exile from the community. Silas has a crisis of faith and moves to a cottage in the outskirts of Lavlo near the stone pits. He becomes a reclusive and an eccentric figure as he has these fits sometimes where he goes into a trance-like state. He begins work as a weaver and fully immerses himself into it and cherishes the gold he collects for his work. Meanwhile, in the village of Ravalo, there lives a man named Godfrey Cass, who is secretly married to a woman of lowly birth named Molly Farron. Molly is a drug addict and Godfrey is ashamed and regretful of his marriage. They also share a young daughter. Nobody knows the truth about Godfrey except his younger brother Dunstan, who uses his information to exploit Godfrey. Godfrey regrets his marriage and wishes to marry a respectable woman named Nancy. One evening, as Dunstan is passing by Silas's cottage, he finds it unlocked. Remembering the talk of the weaver's well, he goes inside, finds the gold and steals it. Silas comes back to cottage and is de devastated at the loss of his gold and has a fit. Meanwhile, Molly, high on op opiates, is tumbling outside in the snow with her daughter and then collapses. The young child walks, uh, walks into Silas's house and falls asleep in the warmth. Silas wakes up to discover a sleeping child in his house and a dead Molly outside. At first, he believes that his gold has returned to him miraculously, but when he takes a closer look, it's actually the golden blonde curls on the child's head. When, God when Godfrey learns about Molly and his child, he sees, he sees it as an opportunity to pursue a relationship with Nancy Lemeter, the woman he loves. Silas takes in the child and grows to love and care for her as one of his own. He names the child Heb uh, Hebzibah. Epi for short after his mother and sister. With Epi's interest in Silas's life, we see him go through a transformation. Silas has a renewed sense of purpose and begins to connect with the people around him. He cherishes Epi and becomes a caring and loving father, a complete change from the bitter loner he had become due to his exile from Lantern Yard. Sixteen years later, Epi has grown up wonderfully and is engaged to be married to Aaron Winthrop. Godfrey and Nancy are now married but have no children. Godfrey suggests adopting Epi, but Nancy refuses. One day, a draining project in the fields causes the stone pits to empty of water. At the bottom, Dunstan Cass's body is discovered along with Silas's stolen gold. Godfrey is horrified when he learns about Dunstan and confesses everything to Nancy. Nancy agrees to adopting Epi, and the both of them visit Epi and Silas. When they made their offer of adoption, Epi refuses as she considers Silas her true father and wishes to stay with him. She does not care for the money and status that Godfrey and, Godfrey and Nancy offer her. Godfrey is disappointed and believes his daughter's rejection of him to be punishment for his past sins. The story ends happily with Epi and Aaron married and moving in with Silas. Godfrey helps to extend Silas's cottage for his growing family and Epi exclaims that they must be the happiest people. Silas Marner is a sweet story of betrayal, love and redemption. It's set in the Victorian era in the early 1800s during the Industrial Revolution and is a work of realistic fiction. 
An interesting fact about Epi's full name, Hepzibah, is that it appears in the Bible and means my delight is in her, which is a sweet choice on Silas's part in naming his child. Themes that Elliot has employed in the story are betrayal. Silas's best friend William frames him for theft, causing Silas to uproot his whole life. However, it is unclear why William cho uh, chose to do so. Silas ends up isolating himself as he has lost his trust in people. When Epi comes into his life, the sweet innocent child brings love with her and we see Silas, go under uh, Silas undergo a transformation. His trust in people is slowly rebuilt. He becomes a more active member of the community, socializing with people, and his faith is, is slowly restored. For Silas, Epi is his chance at personal redemption, and as for Godfrey and Dunstan, Dunstan represents one end of the morality spectrum, as he demonstrates himself to be a thief and blackmailer, and dies without the chance at redemption. Godfrey, who redirects his actions with relations to Molly and Epi, attempts to redeem himself when he assists Epi to have a happily ever after. Several literary elements have been employed by Eliot, including realism, symbolism, and characterization. Eliot is realistic and descriptive in her portrayal of rural life and the struggle of addiction with Molly. The goal that is stolen from Silas is a symbol of Silas's isolation and his exclusion from human love and affection. And with both Silas and Godfrey especially, we see, we see them develop as characters. Silas goes from being a respected member of the community to being a bitter recluse and then a loving and caring father. And we see Godfrey regretting his actions and attempting to redeem himself in his daughter's eyes. Another interesting thing to note about the story is, is that when Epi marries Aaron, it is clear from the start that Aaron is going to come and live with Epi and Silas rather than Epi leaving with Silas, which is an interesting take on the author's part as she attempts to reverse this traditional notion of the daughter leaving the house. With that, we come to the end of this video. Thank you. The end.